So you're, did you say you were in Florida or did I, am I thinking no, wrong? Um, right now in South Carolina. Okay. But you were in Florida, were you? Or you just travel all the time? I am from uh, New England. We technically live in Florida. Uh huh. However, uh, I travel to paint. So yeah. we're only there. Um, at most half the time, uh, -huh. uh, like half the year. So the rest of the time we are traveling, we're out West. Um, most of it, sometimes we go home to new England. Okay. Okay. And did you grow up in California? I didn't. I grew up in, um, Michigan. Michigan. Okay. Michigan girl, and I went to school in Florida, so that's why I was trying to think of. Oh, it's because I maybe I looked up your bio or something and saw it, but oh, okay. What school did you attend? Uh, Ringling College of Art and Design, Ringling. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. I back in the, in the mid 90s started going to Lamb Academy College of Fine Art, and okay. I only knew about Ringling because two students had transferred from Ringling to the uh -huh. academy. Oh. And yeah, so I I didn't get a lot of info about it, but yeah. I, I, I sort of know about it. Um, did you go yes. for painting? I went for um, illustration. Okay. Back in the day, but it was it was all painting anyway. It was all traditional. So um times have changed yes yes they have <laughs> uh i went for a sculpture actually i've been painting for about uh no uh, nine and a half years uh-huh so that's how long i've been at it before that i was uh making larger pieces um making molds and casting and doing all that fun stuff uh, for, for almost a decade. And then uh, I stopped and that was when we were still traveling. So yeah. then I wound up in New Orleans and um, it was recommended to me that I see about trying to sell art out on the street. Wow. It's a popular thing there. And I said, uh -huh. okay, I'll, I'll give it a look. And there was no way I was going to be able to move sculpture out there. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'll just teach myself how to paint. And I had spent the last decade making fun of friends of mine <laughs> from the Lime Academy who painted. Uh -huh. And then I, um, I was in for a rude awakening because it was, not as easy as I thought it was. Yeah. Have you always done oil painting? No, I started off um, absolutely broke. So I had to use whatever I had available, which was when I first started some craft paint, uh, uh -huh. some acrylic and gouache that I got at a local Michael's that was on clearance. <laughs> and then I started painting on... Um, old chunks of wood from some of the local homes in New Orleans that were kind of being renovated. They, they kind uh -huh. of gut them out. And um, you're left with a lot of um, leftover pieces of lath and paneling. So I framed with the lath and I painted on the paneling. Wow. And... That's how I started initially, and it wasn't until years later that I started trying other medium, and I tried watercolor, um, and that was extremely short-lived, and then <laughs> I tried oil, and I've been uh -huh. working on doing that ever since, and uh -huh. I've never attempted... Um, an oil flower. I've just um, done. Really? Yeah, I've, I've just done acrylic flowers because I, I make them um, 
unlike you, my flowers <laughs> do not actually look like flowers. Uh huh. They look like they're made out of iron. <laughs> and they they have a weight which is not very becoming of flowers. <laughs> it's, it's just way too heavy. And I've I, I've made a few attempts to try to paint them. Uh huh. Um, it, it it's just never pretty. So I, I just never went back to it. And I thought, you know, I, I've been doing um, some other painting things while meeting other painters uh, doing this paint cast series. And I've been, I've been painting other things that I'm not really comfortable painting, mm-hmm. um, you know, like other still life images, um, painting with green. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a generalized aversion to green. I, I don't know how you are about <laughs> colors, if you have preferences, but. Um, I know green is, is a pretty common one that people don't like, but I, I don't mind it. I like it a lot. Uh, oh. So <laughs> you are doing something completely different than I am. Yes. I sort of have this um, kind of violet pink background uh-huh. that I'm attempting to build on, and I'm blocking in color, but I'm sort of all over the place trying to get my values right. Right. And, uh-huh. um, what are you doing with gouache there? Uh... So I work a little differently between mm-hmm. gouache and oils. And I painted the scene yesterday, so it's kind of like a cheating a little bit. But um, I, with gouache, I kind of block it all in and then keep working in circles around the, the piece. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now, is just building up my values. Kind so, of. So you, wait, you mean literally like in a circular, mo- like a target? Where you go kind of. and you kind of, so are, are your last marks normally towards the center? Uh, no, I guess not, not super literally, but oh, I, okay. I do tend to give it like passes, just kind of right. going over, over a couple times. But right now I'm just kind of pulling out the negative shapes. Hmm. Yeah, I, I tend to not do a lot of drawing beforehand uh-huh. I tend to also attempt to do that where I just um, I try to work with shape and value mm-hmm. sometimes simultaneously yeah not, not always to my advantage but <laughs> yeah landscape um, kind of spoils you in some ways because um, things are constantly changing in front of you mm-hmm. when you're taking plein air, and then when you're when you're sort of working from photos, um, you can let go a few moves ahead, and yeah. just realize that um, in order to create um, a sense of depth, you have to just sort of work towards a horizon line, and then towards. Um, wherever the eye of the viewer is. Mm-hmm. So there's some shortcutting there, and it's it's not quite the same with uh, portrait or um, figurative or still life work, I, I found, at least for me. I, uh-huh. I, tend to, um, I tend to stumble around a little bit until I really pick up on what I'm doing. Uh-huh. And that's why I, I don't know, I, I try to, to both um, pick out shapes instead of making like linear drawings and yeah. then try to get the value in there. I don't think it's working for me today, though. Like I'm talking <laughs> a big game and it's, it's already falling apart just a little bit for me. <laughs> I feel like the first five minutes was just a little bit stronger you've and, got time okay. sorry so did any did anyone else in your family um 
are, are, are they artists or are you like the only one? I am pretty much the only one. My brother does like performance art. He does a lot of theater, but I am the only visual artist in the family. Okay. Yeah. What about you? Um, yeah, pretty much it's me. My grandfather, uh -huh. um, who is 98, he, he doesn't paint much anymore, but up until a few years ago, he was still painting landscapes. So I, I, I grew up um, around someone who was always um, working. That's and cool. Yeah. So sometimes I have some of his thoughts. Wow. Is, is that my phone <laughs> blowing up? Uh, it's not my I'm, phone. I'm so sorry. I, I have it's okay. my. Oh, I have those updates taken off, and then. Oh. <laughs> I I must have done something wrong because I'm getting texts. So. Oh, uh, good. Popular. I am yes. not popular. Please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what um, do you show? Do you create bodies of work or do you just kind of go on a whim and sell online? Like, what's your deal? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of going through a constant existential crisis, I think. Oh, but, welcome uh, to the Yeah. <laughs> so uh, right now I'm... I'm just doing things on my own and not doing so many gallery things, but I have a few random things here and there, but most of it's just on my own right now. And I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm kind of flailing around. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it, it hasn't been the easiest year to make plans. No. Yeah. All my plans kind of fell through, obviously like everyone else. So yeah. Oh. That's all right. Yeah, so um, I keep on trying to back up and take a closer look at it. Uh -huh. And then I'm squinting and I, I, I think I started off using, well, yeah, maybe I should have done what you did where I started with like a lighter background because this is a pretty contrasty right example and are you using the first or second photo that I sent I'm using the second photo with the okay natural light uh-huh so we'll see what comes of that <laughs> it's a good challenge that's for sure yeah um, have you done a lot of traveling? I, not too much. I used to travel a lot when I was younger, but I haven't recently. Um, I'd like to do more, do more plein air shows. Do you do plein air stuff? Like, uh, the shows? Well, I, I was going, I was going to, um, uh -huh. this year and didn't really work out. I have, um, I have been painting plein air for a number of years, mm -hmm. but it just never kind of occurred to me to actually go try to do one of the shows. Uh -huh. um, it, it always seems like it happened, uh, like the planning of it was way too far in advance. And so I, anything I wanted to do, like I, I missed by several months. So yeah. I, I, it wasn't really on my radar. And then this past year, I thought, you know, Chris, you should get your shit together. <laughs> you should go do these shows, um, meet some other uh, plein air painters and try to uh, see what you can do under mm -hmm. pressure. Because I, I never paint outside. Mm -hmm. like, I am always in my coach or in my car when I paint or I'm like mm -hmm. up against the car or I'm painting out of my hatch of, um, of my tow SUV. 
and or I'm painting at a picnic table or something. Like I'm not standing with the hat motif that you see all the other people have. They're like uh-huh. out with, they're pretending to be happy with the bugs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's not me. Uh, and I was kind of curious if I had what it took to mm. give it a go. Yeah, and, I can uh, see it's it's not for everyone, but it can be pretty fun. Yeah. A nice little break anyway. How, how many events have you done? Uh, uh, I don't know offhand. Probably around at least 10 or so. But Oh, wow. Yeah, I like them. So it's fun. Were they all like in your area of California or were any out of state? Uh, I've done one in Michigan and then one in um, Virginia, okay. West Virginia, I think. And it was, it's good. I like the East Coast events. They seem to be, um, I seem to do pretty well at the East Coast events. Okay. But. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's a good way to meet other artists, like you said. And it's I work well under pressure too, so I kind of like that almost competitive vibe. But yes, I I work pretty well under pressure myself. Uh huh. Because I mean, when I started, I was doing it in front of tourists. Right. And exactly. I had no idea what I was doing, so I had to figure my shit out really fast yeah in order to um be seen in a way mm-hmm. um so I, I i think that helps yeah totally i just took a look at what you're doing and they already look like roses. <laughs> man that's super quick I, you know, I do have that advantage that I did paint them yesterday in oils, but yeah, they're, they're coming along. What did I do there? Do you still do gouache at all? Occasionally I will, um, I'll do some like small studies in gouache um it, it's not really been something that people have uh wanted like it ha- it hasn't been saleable where i've said to myself i should do more pieces in gouache yeah so uh, i i haven't avoided it i just haven't sought it out mm-hmm. um i think that I might enjoy um, doing gouache plein air, but mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I have um, any desire to do studio work in it mm-hmm. um, for maybe maybe three years. I, I mess around with uh, doing landscape paintings with gouache and um, acrylic. Oh. And I used uh, acrylic medium and acrylic gel uh-huh. with gouache. Huh. I got things so that they um, the, the paint sort of went on almost like oil. Yeah. And But it dried really fast. And um, it, it it was it was amusing. It was one of those <laughs> things, if, if you know what I mean, where it, it it kind of interests you and yeah. So I kind of have not gone back to that in a little while. Yeah. So do you um, work in multiple mediums? I or... um. Yeah, I like to work in oils and gouache. It's kind of like a 50-50 split these days. 
but it used to just be gouache. Uh, in school, I did oils, but um, I took about a decade off of traditional art for a while. And I, when I got back into it, it was just gouache. So kind of relearning oils a bit. Yeah. So what were you doing in that decade? Uh, game art. All game digital. Art. Yeah. Kind of huh. weird. <laughs> yeah, my, my 15-year-old daughter is um, into that. And she thinks that she, she might want to pursue something like that. Oh, yeah. So, so she, she does art too? Yes. She, um, she draws in that, in that uh, the fancy iPad program. Uh-huh. Procreate? Yes. Yes. She does the Procreate stuff. And she, she does very well. And she has designed some stickers and T-shirts, and she's actually done um, a few different markets. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that she um, hope that she keeps with it. Yeah. You know, um, I, I met my wife at the academy, and so um, we both have. Uh, interest in the arts mm -hmm. and it would be nice if our daughters did as well but um, mm -hmm. I mean if they don't that's okay too I'm pretty sure that my youngest is uh, dead set on being a YouTube star and rolling <laughs> into an acting career okay so, uh, we'll see we'll see how that flies too yeah that's a tough life Probably, yep. I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, uh, so, do you have pets? Uh, yes. <laughs> I have okay. lots of pets. You do? Yes. Okay, so uh, how, how many? Because I, I know that you have posted something with your dog. Right. And I have two dogs. Two dogs. Yes. Okay. And two cats. And uh, we're down to four chickens now and three ducks. Oh, so it's, it's like a farm atmosphere. Yeah, basically. Huh. That it's sounds good. like fun. Yeah. It keeps things interesting. The animals are definitely entertaining during this pandemic yeah yeah <laughs> i i would imagine so uh now i i have this idea of what ducks are and how they behave <laughs> uh -huh. um are, are your ducks well behaved or are they uh, <laughs> uh yeah they're pretty yeah. they're pretty good they're not i mean we wanted to raise them and have them imprint on us and you know have them follow us around but they don't really do that they're pretty wild in that respect but they're fun hmm. what are you what are you thinking <laughs> oh nothing I, I i'm just asking because i just um we just got a puppy okay and, um it is a half husky half lab mix uh-huh and she has been quite the handful. I'm sure. I, I can only imagine how that many animals. <laughs> I mean, my schedule has totally changed from one. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. Husky. One of our dogs is a husky mix. Oh, cool. And he's psycho. So I can imagine. <laughs> I can feel your pain. Yeah, they, they have a, a very uh, particular energy about them. Right, yeah. But. We thought ours was a lab because as a puppy, he looked like a lab, and my husband always wanted a lab. So we got him, and then he ended up, we did one of those DNA tests, and he ended up being um, everything but a lab, <laughs> I think. Oh, really? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it, ours is a definite lab ski. We saw okay. pictures of her parents, and her mother was like black lab, and her father was uh, a red husky. Okay. So you know for sure. Yeah. That's cool. Sorry, the scratching. I don't know if you hear that. That's my cat in the room. I, my office is the cat room. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't mind that. <laughs> huh. So, have you made painting videos before? I've done YouTube videos. Okay. Uh, I do some, like, paint salons and stuff, but the editing is such a pain. I don't know. Do you do, you do much editing with these, or do you? No, kind of... I, I don't know how to. I, oh. am, <laughs> I am minimally technologically gifted, <laughs> and I struggle a lot with um, figuring out these things. Yeah. Um, that's one of the main reasons I decided not to keep going with the the sculpture was because I knew that eventually the field was going to go directly into, um, you know, doing the Z brush. Right. Kind of thing. I, I saw it coming <laughs> in the early two thousands. Uh -huh. And when I attempted to do anything with it, I knew that it was not for me that, you know, what I had gone to school for and what I really enjoyed um, was rapidly changing. Right. And so uh, I decided just to try something else. But um, what kind of sculpture did you do? Sorry if you said it already. Uh, no, I, I did um, figurative work and mostly in clay and wax. Mm -hmm. um, I did portraits. Uh, I taught portrait and figure sculpture. I did some foundry stuff. Um, yeah, pretty uh, run of the mill for sculpture. I, I wasn't um, ever much of a, um, a fabricator. Like I didn't do a lot of welding. Mm -hmm. and I think that's, what may have um, stopped me from moving away from sculpture is mm -hmm. if I did more welding or if I could have um, gotten another job doing fabrication mm -hmm. of some sort, I think I might have stuck with it. Um, but I, I ended up not doing that. I ended up just, uh, just kind of winging it. Yeah. Oh, I, I have I painted some disgusting things <laughs> when I first started, like like just crawfish and beer bottles and yeah, um, empty oysters uh -huh. that sort of thing, and that was what the people wanted, and that's what I did, and it took a long time before I could actually. Um, paint anything that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I began to show. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that how you felt doing the game stuff? Uh, I was just tired of sitting in front of a computer all day. Okay. And uh, I don't know. I enjoy having the tactile nature of traditional painting yeah what kind of digital work were you doing uh pretty much anything that you see in mobile games so like the background art the character art like pretty much a general concept artist oh, of like okay. those like bubble shooter cutesy casual games that's kind of awesome actually yeah I, it was I, fun I, I like casual games, uh -huh. but I'm a little bit of um, an addictive personality when it comes to that sort of thing. So 
as soon as I start a game, all of a sudden, like I have all these other things to do. I have a family. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and then two hours later, I'm like, oh, that, that was just two <laughs> hours. I yep. completely get lost. And yeah, and I, I don't, I have to really be careful about that kind of stuff with myself. Are, are you into gaming at all? Uh, no. But I, I mean, I, I can totally understand and, um, you know, I'd have to test a lot of games and play a lot just to get reference or yeah. see what other companies are doing. And I totally have that same kind of addictive personality going on. So I can relate to you. Yeah, there was... There's something special about all those colors and moving lights. Uh huh. Well, they make them that way too. I mean, yeah, they want to hook it. you. <laughs> oh well. Ugh. So I hope you don't mind me saying so, but as I see you paint there, I see that it looks like you have a sleeve. Uh yeah, I have. Well, it's not a sleeve, a full sleeve. Oh. It's just my forearm. And then I have um, a chicken tattoo on my left bicep. Oh, okay. When did you get those? Uh, I got, I think it's been a couple of years now that I've had them. I, I'm still yet to actually have any ink. Uh-huh. Do you want it? any? I'm not sure. <laughs> um. This sounds crazy, but it's almost like I want to wait until my wife maybe does it <laughs> before I do it. Does she want any? I'm not sure. <laughs> so it doesn't sound like it, it's probably going to happen. Yeah. We both are, um, I don't know, a little adverse to pain. Uh-huh. <laughs> I yeah, I get it. <clears throat> um, excuse me. It's something that I think maybe would have happened if I had done it in my twenties. Yeah. But I'm 41, so yeah, I, I, I need to be a little bit more choosy or be that guy. Uh huh. And you know what I'm talking about <laughs> because. Um, California is full of them. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I, I was on the fence for a really long time. Um, but then once I started, like, following other tattoo artists and kind of, uh, kind of letting go of the reins a little bit, like, at first, I was so indecisive. What would I get? Like, it has to be exactly so meaningful and everything. But mm-hmm. then I kind of just picked a thing and then told the artist to just run with it. Because that's how you're going to get the best art, in my opinion, is just letting them do their what they're good at. So yeah. that was how that happened for me. That makes sense. Uh, okay, I'm moving my light here. Is this helping or hurting? Wait, I didn't... Uh, it still looks good. Okay, okay. I just didn't want glare to be on there. No, I don't I'm see not, any glare. I'm, I'm losing some light where I am here. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, it's getting late. Well, it, it's, it's not that late. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm surrounded by uh, trees. So... Uh-huh. The glancing light in the afternoon really um, brings it down a few notches in here. Uh, yeah, I, I'm. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this like I do other pieces that I do uh-huh. on here, where it's like an hour and I'm done and I sign it, sort of thing. I might have to really actually go back and try to figure out some of this. Um, Are you enjoying it? No, not at all. This this is fucking torture. This is like, 
I really need to do a lot of squinting here. And I, it's like I'm not really seeing what I want to see. Uh huh. Um, you know, and the only person to blame for that is me. <laughs> it's so hard to work from photos, though. I have a hard time with it. I, I've gotten used to it. And I actually don't mind it. Um, but I will say, I don't work from just a single photo normally. Uh -huh. If I use photo reference, um, I'll use one, two, up to like five different sources. Mm -hmm. So I can uh, sort of um, pick and choose what I want to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just there's so much color in there that uh, uh, I I, I want to add more too. Yeah, I, I always think I'm going a little light on the color because um, I mean, people who listen to me a lot or know I'm I'm, I'm what I'm about to say next, and they're going to be like, "Oh, sh shut up, Chris. Who cares?" But I'm, I'm a little color deficient. Like, uh -huh. uh, I have a red green issue. Oh, really? Where I don't, yeah, I, I don't really see the whole range of colors. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, have you ever taken one of those online tests? I have, but I don't know if it really works online because, like, everyone's. Yeah, I don't know. I guess. I, I, I I've taken two different kinds, uh -huh. I've taken, um, a normal type, and then I've taken a few online ones, and I'm good with about 60 to 70% of the colors. Okay. And then at a certain point, I stopped being able to differentiate. Oh. So, so sometimes people will regard an how much of a colorist I am and how bold my choices are. Uh -huh. And, you know, if they're right next to me, I'll explain to them, no, well, I, I appreciate it. It's not boldness. It's <laughs> this. <laughs> That's interesting. I have, I've, some people ex um, have told me that they think maybe I'm one of those, uh, one of those people that can see more color than the average person, I forget what it's called. But I don't know. I know that my, my color vision is pretty good from the few tests that I have done, but I'm not sure if I actually see more or if I'm just like training my eye to pay attention to things more or what. Okay. I... Um... I have very good normal vision. Like I'm, well, the last time I was checked was when I was a kid. I don't think it's changed that much. I had 2010 in my left, uh -huh. 2015 in my right. So both are better than 2020. Yeah. And I, I can still see things that the rest of my family can't see. In, in the distance, like I have really great uh distance vision and it's still pretty sharp like i've never worn glasses or contacts or anything mm -hmm. and i am so scared if i have to one day like i i don't know what i'll do I, i've prided myself for so many years <laughs> on this ridiculous notion uh -huh. that I, i'm never gonna have to wear any kind of glasses or anything and i, I know it's gonna happen and it, it's going to happen like any, it's going to happen like within the next year. And I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to listen back to this and be like, oh shit, <laughs> you said it out loud and look what happened. Yeah, it might, you never know. I used to have super perfect vision, but um, over the years, it's definitely gotten a little worse and I have glasses that I probably should be wearing, but I don't. Really? You wear glasses? I have some. They say my vision is pretty good, like 9 out of 10. But um, I, like, in certain conditions with, like, dimmer lighting, mm -hmm. it 
it's harder to see things get blurrier for me which is frustrating especially coming from like having really good eyes and then suddenly it's not perfect it's a little annoying but you get used to it i guess yes yeah <laughs> And my instinct is to go, like, really thick in some of these areas, too. And I know that I really shouldn't. For, um, for where? Do you tend to, like, build up your, your lights that way? That's what I tend to do with oils. Yes. Um, and if, if I'm having a good day... I make uh-huh. all the right choices, and when I actually do start to really um, build the paint up, it will, yeah. like, it, it works. And then other times, um, it gets a little goopy. Yeah. I know and, that feeling. And, and then I have to ask myself, who do you think you are, Chris? <laughs> Take all this paint off. Uh, so how man. many of these have you, have you done how many of these the, paint casts oh these videos uh-huh. um, i've shot this will be my 31st wow and um yeah so a, a few others didn't turn out i think i posted 25 of them mm-hmm. so a, a fair amount uh, worked out, and I'm still trying to get the hang of it. Mm-hmm. I'm not really good with the technology. Yeah, it's hard. Aspect of it, and um, because I'm not in one location, mm-hmm. it's kind of difficult to get help or to have like a team of people, right? Uh, do anything f- for the cause, you know. So Mm -hmm. it's all basically me and it just came from an idea that I had like back in 2017 Mm -hmm. when I put the first like beginning paint cast up on YouTube Mm -hmm. and it was just me talking while I was painting, but Mm -hmm. basically talking to myself. And then I was doing this other thing where I paint side by side and I would be watching a painting I, I just made but using alternative materials to try to recreate it. Oh. And huh. I, I, I don't know where that wacky idea came from, but I did it like three times and then I decided to stop. And then I just did some like time-lapse painting videos and put some of those up. Um, and then back when all this COVID started, I, I, I thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm really not going to be able to um, see anybody this year, maybe. So uh, what about the people that I see their work on Instagram? Uh-huh. Like, oh, that's really interesting. I wonder what it would be like to meet and paint alongside that person. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh! I'm so sorry. My phone is ringing <laughs> nonstop. I put it, I put it on do not disturb, and I turned uh-huh. all notifications off. It's okay. I believe you. What is happening? <laughs> yeah, and and that's another thing too. Like uh, something like this will happen, and uh-huh. I'll go, and I'll try to look it up, and I'll think to myself, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, no, that's not what happens. I go around in a circle on the internet. And then I end up not knowing what I did wrong or how to fix it. <laughs> I know you said you, you have daughters, right? Do they help you at all with the, the oh. tech side of things? They laugh at me. <laughs> my, my seven-year-old um, uh-huh. <laughs> is really quick to try to give me advice on things that I don't <laughs> think she knows anything about. Uh So I am weary about that. And (laughs) my, uh, my older daughter uh, will just kind of drop me hints. 
and never actually do anything for me or tell me exactly how much she knows. Yeah. It's one of those type of things. Uh. Uh, I think I need to switch brushes too. Okay. Wow. There's just so many different little pieces of nuance and just a bowl of flowers. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on in this. So it's always interesting to see people who paint these uh -huh. because I know the level of stress I get when it comes to a subject matter like this. And to think that other people are actually like, this calms them maybe. <laughs> it's a crazy thought. I don't know. Is, is this, this is actually calming, calming for you? <laughs> um, it is. I honestly like I'm painting flat on a table right now. And I feel like anytime I paint at an angle that's a little different, it feels a little off. So it's not exactly calming in that respect, but I don't mind it too much. Okay. Yeah. It's definitely a little weird. And I'm not the greatest at talking and painting. I don't Nobody know. Do is. you get this a lot? <laughs> okay. That's I feel like. So weird and <laughs> kind of fun at the same time because nobody else really does this. Everyone else uh -huh. is too well adjusted and sane to want to <laughs> try something completely new. Uh huh. You know? And I, I, I totally get it. I, I've, I've actually asked um, a good amount of people who have been really nice about it, but they've been like, no, I, I, I don't think <laughs> I could ever do that. Like, I, I can't even hum and paint at the same time. Like, I wouldn't be able to put a sentence together. And yeah, yeah, I, you know, I, I tried to keep encouraging them. Oh, yeah, try it, try it. But it's it's hard it's not easy even when i'm doing my videos i there's always a point when i get really silent and focused mm -hmm. do you think people like that or do you think they are just like um really desiring you to be like non-stop chatterbox while you're working no i don't I don't think they do expect, I think I put those expectations on myself, but okay. it, I am very conscious of when I do it and I don't really enjoy that part, but they say like people are always supportive and they say it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Don't know if I believe them entirely, but. Yeah, I, I haven't really put together a video video yet <laughs> um some folks have asked me um to do like a landscape video <laughs> and i'm a little wary about doing it because i don't know what is gonna what kind of stupid shit is gonna fall out of my mouth <laughs> i mean it, it, it's one thing with you here because uh -huh. Um, this is like pre-recorded and if you say anything that is like, whoa, I don't know why that just popped out <laughs> to you, not include that. I can be like, yeah, I will totally take that out. Uh -huh. but, um, yeah, I, I when, when other people edit, um, I, I think I would be a little wary about what they'd leave in and what they'd take out. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I did some teaching as a uh -huh. sculptor and sometimes I would just go off onto these tangents. Yeah. And they'd be fun for me and I don't know if they were <laughs> all that fun for the students. So I, I also don't I don't want to be a drag either, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's... I, you should try out... Um, have you ever done Instagram Live? 
Like live streams? Yes. I've done it uh, a few times. However, I was doing it from a Starbucks and a Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, so bad both, Wi-Fi? Both the times I did it. No, the Wi-Fi was fine. I just didn't realize that the music that they played <laughs> in those two places, uh -huh. whatever kind of AI they have in those systems, it picks up the music oh. and it will start you off because you don't have license to play it. Right. So that happened, that happened to me both times where I was kind of shut down right in the middle of it. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, it's a little annoying. And I, I just never went back to it. Mm. That's oh. kind of where I started doing uh, videos and kind of getting more comfortable talking in front of people. It was just that, but I don't think I could handle I, I did have problems with the music, too, because it's kind of weird just doing it in silence. But, um, yeah, I don't know. That sucks. <laughs> I, I don't know if I could be silent. E even if I wanted to, I'd, <laughs> I'd end up like some kind of annoying rhythmic, like foot tapping or something <laughs> else to drive people away uh-huh yeah i mean i don't i don't really talk that much i i don't think i'm a, a talkative person in general but um when i know something is recording me yeah i i, I will definitely just start to blab yeah it's a little weird but like I like with Instagram because you can talk to people too. So it's, it's a little bit of back and forth. Yeah. So um, are, are people just basically asking you what you're doing or they're asking you like technical questions sort of thing? Usually. Sometimes it's a, a little bit of just random questions or just chatting oh. or talking about art. Huh. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, I, I have some. You, you want a random crazy question? Uh, sure. I totally have one for you. <laughs> uh huh. Um, have you seen UFOs in your neck of the woods? I have not. Oh. Please tell me where this is going. I'm just wondering because I saw something last week and I think it was on YouTube and they were talking about um, hotspots and uh -huh. where there are these new UFO hotspots and they showed this map and it was um, like essentially um, like from from like Santa Barbara area all the way up to Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And that was like um, this year's, I guess, hotspot. I, I'm terrible with actually remembering these sources, so I can <laughs> cite them. And, uh, yeah, just some random person on YouTube told me, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I knew that you were in California. So in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, oh. maybe, maybe I should ask Heather. <laughs> no, no UFO sightings here. But I have been um seeing all that talk about it oh you have it's crazy not not in california i didn't know that was a thing here but i know that you know in the what is it the air force and stuff they've been spotting oh yeah they've weird. been releasing um yeah tic tac uh the the, the tic tac ufo video right yeah yeah that's kind of crazy yeah i i've I think I've seen a UFO before. Really? It was many years ago. Yeah. Um, and it was in, um, where was it? It was somewhere in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not near Roswell. We were uh, in another part of New Mexico. And um, I think we were staying at like, we were like just overnighting somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say, 
it was a parking lot of some sort. I don't remember exactly which one, but it was the evening and um, it was kind of uh, approaching the blue hour. So the sun had already set and there uh-huh. were people, uh, there was like a coach that was near us and they walked outside and they were looking up in the sky. And then there were some people who stopped their cars and they were looking up and someone was taking photos. So then my wife and I go outside and we're looking up and we see what just looks, looks like it might be a satellite or something. Mm -hmm. And it's really bright, but it's not moving and it's getting brighter and brighter. And then there's some guy who is kind of like, Oh, don't worry about that. That's not aliens. And he started to describe something about um, like the angle that things approach and how uh-huh. the, the light could just be like an atmospheric thing because of um, where it's approaching from. And, and as he's talking, it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden it, it's still not moving. Yeah. And several minutes later, it hasn't moved. Oh, and, so weird. Yeah. And then it took like a full half hour for it to, actually retreat and it didn't move out of the sky it just looked like it went away like yeah the light got smaller and smaller and smaller so um i'm pretty sure it wasn't an airplane or a helicopter or anything Uh there's absolutely no sound and i'm pretty sure that things that um that orbit the earth like satellites they they move yeah you know, and, and that thing just didn't want to move. Oh, that's weird. A little weird. I mean. Um, Were you creeped out? No. What what actually creeped me out was years later, I told someone else the story and they were kind of kind of UFO conspiracy theory people. Uh-huh. And um, I, I was just sort of interested to see their reaction. And they said, oh. Well, there are some, um, you know, there's like a one thought out there that every time you see a UFO, it's because they allow you because they've already taken you. What? And I said, <laughs> and I said what? And he's like, oh, yeah, well, uh, people who are already, like, um, taken aboard, they're, I, I don't know, he, he, basically, like, in order to see the thing, uh-huh. You had to already have been, um, like, beamed up somehow. Uh-uh. So, okay. I, I, I don't know where that was. <laughs> but I, I remember thinking that he was, that this guy was full of it. And then I, I, I heard it somewhere else, too. Really? Yeah. So I have not heard of that. Yeah. I, I don't know what kind of... I mean, there are like layers of UFO theories out there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and and my one um, my one experience, uh, I know, does not even scratch any surface. So, huh. yeah, I, I I asked someone else on a podcast um, from New England about ghosts. Yeah, I was and... going to ask you about ghosts. <laughs> And she said that, oh, no, she, she doesn't really believe in that sort of thing. She, she's never seen one. Uh-huh. You know, that, that's just. So I said, oh, OK. And. Um, yeah, I, I don't have ghost stories. Yeah, me um, neither. Yeah, I. I only have um, like a handful of unexplainable things that have um, happened that aren't uh, absolutely boring to talk about. <laughs> like, Actually, I have, I have one kind of a ghost story. Oh! Kind of. It. Uh, it's definitely the weirdest thing that happened to me is I was with my ex in a hotel in Los Angeles and um, 
suddenly in the middle of the night, he starts speaking like in a really scary low voice that's in Spanish and he doesn't speak Spanish. And I was like, just stare, sitting there with my eyes like wide open and I didn't know what to do. And uh, I tried to wake him up, but he, he wasn't waking up. So I just kind of like laid there and I asked him about it the next day. And he's like, no, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, but it was super creepy. I've never experienced anything like that before. That's it was very like, creepy. Yeah, he acted like he was possessed, and he doesn't even speak Spanish. But, I mean, I don't hear, so I don't know if it was actually, like, Spanish, but it sounded like it. <laughs> it was just really strange, and I'm never going back to the hotel, wherever it was. It yeah, was, like, a really dingy old hotel, too, so uh, really? it was actually creepy. Huh. Yeah. It probably wasn't the most exciting story, but do you hear my dog? He's like yes. howling, like a wolf. I do. <laughs> that howl from our puppy usually means that she um, is either hungry or wants to play. Uh huh. In the uh, DNA test that I did with the dogs, they have this wolfiness chart, and it's something like how, um, I guess, I don't, I don't really understand the whole wolfiness thing, but it, it's basically saying like how many traits they have that kind of go back from when dogs were wolves. I'm probably okay. saying it's all wrong. But, um, and I guess the high percentage is like, you know, 2% or to 0.5%. And both of our dogs were like off the charts, wolfy, like 7%. Like, it was kind of weird. So it makes sense that they're so wild. They act completely wild compared to other dogs. Huh. A lot of weird behaviors. Yeah. Now, is that sort of like the 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 Neanderthal genetics with humans? Yeah, I th I think so. I think that's kind of what it was hinting okay. at. Because okay. I, I know that I I had the the DNA thing done, uh -huh. and I I was a healthy percentage Neanderthal. Which uh, makes perfect sense <laughs> for me, you know, uh -huh. and looking back on uh, when I was growing up and some of my choices. Um, <laughs> but I, I guess I have a carryover trait from Neanderthals where um, I, I guess a certain percentage of the population has it, too. The way it was explained to me was... Um, at least back in the 90s, this is what they thought, uh, that there is, um, there are four um, flexor connections in your forearm mm -hmm. that run from like the inside of your elbow all the way past your, uh, the carpus or wrist. And uh -huh. that, um, that Neanderthals, they think because of their bone structure had three. And okay. that uh, some humans only have three as well. And then the um, this orthopedic surgeon doctor who was uh, kind of in one of the classrooms one time at the academy, mm -hmm. he um, was called over and he checked on me and he said, oh, yeah, you only have three. You're you're missing a like a, a flexor uh, longus or something. Uh huh. So it, it's one of those like if you do the Spider Man thing, where you you put your hand out like Spider Man would with his yeah. uh, with his middle finger and ring finger in, uh -huh. and you kind of curl your wrist up a little. You uh -huh. can feel, uh, more, or most people can feel four distinct like thick rubber bands in there. 
Okay. And I feel three. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how many I feel. Uh oh. I don't know. Yeah, maybe there's that's four. that's just like an empty anecdote that's neither here or there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I I don't know how much <laughs> more I can do here. I'm it looks out good. Lot, putting out a lot of paint. Yeah. I thought I had more structure in the actual bowl. Yeah. But now I magically don't. Like it's all. I just need to make that a line, I think. Wow. This was um this was not easy. Good challenge. Yeah. I wanted to challenge you. Yeah, well, uh thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean I think it looks like a flower and it does. I think let me rephrase that. One of them looks like a flower. The they rest all look are, like flowers. The rest are a little questionable. <laughs> This was so much fun to chat with you. Yeah. Paint. And yeah. You, wow. You're, I will say your flowers look like flowers. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to probably look at it upright later and try to do some fixes, but it's getting there. But it was fun. Thanks for talking and thinking of yeah. me. Where can, uh, where can, the viewer see more of your work um my website is heather Ean art and then Ean is my middle name i-h-n so heather i-h-n art.com and my instagram is at heather Ean. so heather i-h-n awesome yeah thank you I so much I'm... and if we do Go this ahead. again uh huh. Can it be something other than a flower? Yeah, you get to pick next time. Fantastic. <laughs>